So guys, if you haven't noticed already, we have a special guest with us. This is our friend Kevin. What's up? And that's when all of a sudden I was wearing band t-shirts all the time. Mm. Albeit very emo, poppy kind of bands like Yellow Card, Taking Back Sunday. Taking, Taking Back, Back Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. And then my hair started getting really long to the point where it got down to my shoulders. Sporty Street Punk. I like... <laughs> if you were a Spice Girl, that would be your name. <laughs> One question for you. What are three Korean trends that you feel that you would rather walk a plank into a sea full of crocodiles than wear? So things I don't like. Yeah, that you just do not like on yourself, on others, it doesn't matter, you're just like, no. Oh. No, no, no. Oh man, that's intense. I can't I can't use the word hate anymore not hate. because I've been here for too long. So even things that drove me crazy before mm -hmm. I'm just too just too to the point that I'm like, oh that's alright. Okay. But uh that being said, uh, I think number one on my list is um, shorts with like the Oxford like dress shoe. You know what I'm saying, right? It's like a preppy look that yeah. Koreans have. I'm not sure if you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, like with like the Sperry kind of Yeah, look? but not even the Sperry's, but like big chunky dress Oxford black shoes with shorts. And it's so jarring for me to see, especially yeah. when they wear white socks with it. So it's like Michael Jackson, but without the rest of the swag. It's just like the white and black mismatch. <laughs> it's like, God, like you couldn't pay me to wear that. That's how bad it is. But that being said, I'm getting used to it, and I get what aesthetic is going for, like that preppy aesthetic, which I think works better if you're wearing just penny loafers without socks. Yes, it's a silhouette issue. Right. Not like the just chunky, like Frankenstein boot on the bottom, walking around. <laughs> Frankenstein boot. Because at least if it were combat boots, it'd be like, oh, it's kind of punky, right? Mm -hmm. Like combat boots with shorts, like that's cool, I can do that. I'd wear that, but then when it's like that low heel, like chunky awesome. bike with the shorts, I'm just like, oh, I can't do it. I feel ya. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. What's so, another trend you don't like? Uh, definitely capris, and although it's not really as big an issue today, it's more something maybe I'll just wear sometimes, which are the older men here. But I think it's an older Korean trend. You know, like in uh, when I first came to Korea, that was still remnants of what was popular even before that when Koreans were still popping their collars on their polo shirts. You know the Buckaroo brand? At that time also, it was cool to wear capris. Which, if you need a refresher so you don't have to waste time Google fooling it, capris are when the pant leg goes all the way to like, just past the knee, and it stops. Which is still cool, and it will probably always be cool for women. Something about it is very uh, inherently indecisive, I feel like, where it, it, it's refusing to be short, but it's also refusing to be like a pant, so it can't commit. So it is my belief that the space between above your knee and like up to a certain point above your ankle, that's no man's land. Like, no man's land, right? You can't, you don't, you don't go here, you don't go here. You're not, you're not like third grader you rolling up your pants going into like the ocean. Like that's not like a good look, for, like all the time. I like, can't stand like capris. Like, and, and it's like restricting because like you're so close to having the freedom of shorts, right? So being, close, like, but yet so far. <laughs> Too far, No yeah. man's land. Yeah. So no, no bueno. I think the same rule applies for um, when men wear suits too. Because yeah. you, you, you see these days that men's pant legs on suits are rising. But I like that look where like the suit leg is a little above. I dig it where too. It should. So, some, so like them can express themselves with their socks. Yeah, right? And it opens up yeah, to more showing off your socks. Just, you know, stop it at a certain part of your leg. Yeah, don't go up. Can you imagine a pant leg, uh, like a super pant leg that just went like a little past the knee? That'd be <laughs> insane. Lederhosen. But then, so there is that look where it's a suit look but it's shorts. You've seen that mm. before, right? That's also kind of cool in the summertime. Kind of cool. I can dig it. Schoolboyish. Yeah, with like the penny loafers again. Which is cool. But then, you know. It's very European style. It's very Italian. Very preppy, very. Mm. That European look. What's another trend? Uh, know, like, not like. Not dislike, but I think the last one is less clothes and more uh, makeup. So people who are into Korean culture at all, whether you have K-pop or you live in Korea or you just know, uh, Korean men in general, it's much more simple to wear makeup here than it is 
say compared to America for sure, right? Um, I'm not wearing any. Uh, I don't. But I do you know? know friends that do. I see it on the street all the time. Men wear makeup. There's nothing wrong with wearing makeup as a guy. You could be wearing dress. You could be wearing eyeshadow, lipstick, whatever you want to do to express yourself within your comfort zone. My only caveat being, I don't like when the makeup hasn't been blended well enough with the skin. So you have like this like John Travolta like face off <laughs> like line going around your chin where I can see that your face has gone from white to tan. Even in like uh, Korean like hip hop, hip hop is supposed to be like very masculine. Mm. Like do you know any like, like feminine mm. hip hop rappers? No, but in Korea there's this one really famous. I like him. Uh, Tiko. He like wears like lipstick. I was just and gonna say uh, Zico, but then you, yeah. but you brought him up oh, by the yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> he has like white, his, his face is like super like makeup. Mm -hmm. Especially like in his uh, last last video, she's a baby. His styling is very feminine. Yeah. He's very. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think that is in a country that's so conforming? To... Why people like him and G Dragon can be so androgynous when they. We're just even the typical K-pop guy. Period. Oh, why is that more acceptable here? Yeah. Than... Uh, I think it's because of what defines masculinity in India is maybe more defined by, I guess, success and wealth than it might be in America. That's one possible explanation. Another would be that straight up, it's almost rebellious and an inevitable like counter to how hyper masculine Korean male expectations can be. For example, in some ways, I don't know if you guys feel this, uh, the expectations for a man to be a man in Korea is in some ways way stronger than it is in the US, if not comparable. Can you explain that more? Uh, for example, it's not set in stone, but have, maybe you've heard that thing where well, Korean men are only expected or allowed to cry three times in their lives. Oh yeah. When is it? When you're born, because you're a baby, you're crying. Uh -huh. When you have a kid, uh -huh. and when you have your first when kid. When your parents die. When your parents die, and you can only cry during those three times. It's changing, and dramas also allow a segue for like men to be come out as more feminine. Um, which don't throw that off as nothing. Like oh, it's drama. It's just TV. How can you say that's anything? No, that is a big deal mm. because the media we consume mm. defines where society is at in terms of what is acceptable or not. Oh, I keep dropping things on white shoes. <laughs> That's cool. Are your shoes okay? Yeah. Safe? Okay.